Robinson of Kingdom of Power Ministries, where me and my beautiful wife, Prophetess Tanya Thomas, and we pastor this great ministry. Um, we are living in, 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 in some crazy times. But even in the midst of crazy time, the Lord is still good and his mercies endureth forever. Amen. Bless the name of God forever. Listen, I, I was, and again, I, like I said, I'm just so excited because how I many you know that sometimes in, in, in the midst of crisis, you know, you still need to be encouraged. You still need to be empowered and inspired by the word of the Lord. Amen. And, and when you when you when you are empowered and inspired, it gives you the strength to keep on keeping on. Hallelujah. So so before, like we do here on Kingdom of Power, before we get into the word of the Lord, we want to open up in prayer. Amen. So just stretch your hands as we begin to open up in prayer. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just give you all the glory and the honor and the praise, oh God. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would bring illumination and revelation to your word that will cause change, that will cause our paradigms to shift, that will empower us, that will encourage us and inspire us to do what you've called us to do. And we just give you all the glory, honor, and praise. And we decree and declare that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Father God, we decree and declare, Father God, that the enemy is bound and there's nothing that the devil can do about it. Father, I thank you in advance, Father God, that even now while they're watching, I thank you that your presence is even with them when they're watching in their homes or watching on their phones, wherever time that they're watching. Lord, I thank you that your presence is there with them. The angels are stationed with them, that your presence is, is, is overshadowing and has filled that space right where they are. And I thank you for signs, wonders, and miracles and healings taking place as your gospel is being shared, as your gospel is being preached and taught on today. In Jesus' magnificent name, amen, amen, amen. Um, open your Bibles with me too. The book of Matthews in the Gospels of uh, Matthew's chapter 6. Matthew's chapter 26. I mean 25. Amen. Uh, and again, I, I, I just want to encourage you with the word of the Lord. You know, in, in, in our nation, there's so much hysteria that's going on based off this virus. You know, or how how we how are we going to survive? Are we going to how, how can we make it? And, and people are, are rushing to the stores and, and they're, they're buying up food, they're buying up toilet paper and, and buying up all these things based out of fear. But let me encourage you today out of Matthew's chapter, Matthew's chapter six, verse 25. Listen to this. Let this encourage your spirit. Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Hmm. Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his stature? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? 
for all for all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. He knows that we need all these things. But, verse 33, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. What am I saying to you? The Heavenly Father knows exactly what you need. But everything that's going on is leading us back to one thing, seeking Him. And, and in verse 33, he said, but seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things, everything that you need. Come on, your 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 food, your, your, your clothing, come on, your health, your, your, uh, your mind, everything. Be at ease. Just seek me. Is that what he's saying? Seek me. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. He's, he, said, he said, I will take care of you. Just seek me. Seek me. Seek me with your whole heart. Seek me with everything in you. Seek me. Listen, that's, that's the message that God is saying to us. Seek me. Come after me. Seek me with your whole heart. You know, we, and last week we, 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 we talked about the, and, and we talked about Psalms 91 and how he, how we don't have to worry about the terror that fly by day and the arrows that fly by night. We don't have to worry about the pestilence. It won't come in our dwelling. You know, and, and, but everything derived, derives from seeking the Lord, staying in the secret place of the Most High. How do you get into the secret place? You have to seek Him. Seek Him. Pray. Seek His face. Come on, and that's what He's saying. If, if, if you do these things, if you seek after me, I'll take care of all your needs. Everything that's happening in our country, in the world, is pointing back to one thing. Of course, repentance and seeking him. Seek me. Seek ye first the kingdom. Get back to... Get, listen, God, he said... Get quiet, get in my presence. Allow me to, what? Realign your focus. Seek me, seek my kingdom. Seek after my kingdom and my righteousness. All these things will be added. Everything that you need will be added unto you. He won't let you lack. So, so in essence, catch this now. Your, your ability to be sustained. Your sustainment is in seeking him and his kingdom. Listen, when you, when you come into, when you ask the Lord to come into your life, right? Once you have been born again, you have been born again into a kingdom, the kingdom of God. And when you are under, and when you are in, when you are part of the kingdom of God, you are, you are just like in a kingdom, you, you, part, you are able to participate in the law of common wealth. So if the king is prosperous, so are the people. Oh, come on, that's good news. That's why he tells us to seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added unto the war. In other words, you are able to participate in everything that's pertaining to the kingdom. Did you catch that? Oh, come on, that's good news. Well, uh, come on, he, he told us this. Let's go back to verse, 
Verse 25, therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life. Don't worry about it. What you going to eat, what you going to drink, or what you going to, come on, your, your clothes that you're going to wear, how you going to be sustained, how you sustain your life. Don't, don't worry about that. He said, I, I, I took care of the birds. They don't worry about nothing. They just, can't, they just keep living or they just keep expressing the life of God in them. Listen, every time a bird chirps, he's, just, he's expressing the life of God on the inside of him. Come on, every time the trees move from side to side with the wind, they are, they are expressing the life of God in him. Come on, they, what does he say? Look at the birds of the air. In verse 20, he said, look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. He takes care of them. Are you not more valuable than them? Yes, you are. So why not trust in him? Why not seek after him? Why? Because your sustainment is tied to you seeking after him and his kingdom. Again, when you, be when you become part of that kingdom, when you, when you ask the Lord to come into your life and you receive him in your heart, you're now part of the kingdom of God. And when you're part of the kingdom of God and you're under his lordship, his kingdom, that means that is, he's obligated to take care of you. When you're obedient to the king, he's obligated to take care of you. You remember last week we talked about Psalms 91? He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Come on, you're under his protection. No pestilence, no disease, no, no evil can, can cross your dwelling, can come to your house. You're hidden in his presence. Come on. There's benefits to this. Being in the kingdom. There's benefits to seeking after him. As you listen, when, when you see, that's how you build that relationship with the Lord. You seek after him. Jesus even tells us in his word, he said, if you seek me, you shall find me. Knock and the door shall be open unto you. Seek, ask, and knock. Seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness. Jesus makes you righteous. His blood makes you righteous. When you receive him, it makes you righteous. So he's saying, seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness. And then what's, what's the end results? What's the benefits of that? All these things, everything that you need to sustain your life will be added to you so that you can be sustained. So what am I saying to you? You don't have to walk in fear. You can walk in faith and knowing that he gives us a promise in Matthew 6 and 33 that when I seek his kingdom and his righteousness, everything that I could ever need, everything that I, can, that I want, will be added to me. So I, I worry that the word worry is another word for anxiety. Stressing. Say, don't stress over those things. Don't worry about those things. You, you want to know what, 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 what stems from worrying and anxiety? Stress, fear. Didn't I tell you that he did not give you a spirit of fear? But what did he give you? He gave you power. He gave you love and a sound mind. That's what he's given us. So what am I, what am I saying to you? So when you don't operate <laughs> in faith and when you operate in fear, under the spirit of fear, you're going to find yourself worrying about what you're going to eat, how you're going to clothe yourself, how, how, 
How are you going to survive? You're going to worry about those things. Why? Because all your focus is going to be on seeking after those things and stressing after those things when God is saying, right now, I want you to set your affections towards me and begin to seek my face. Seek after me. And when you seek after me and my kingdom, everything that you need, your, your sustainment, your ability to be sustained, is tied to your seek. Mm -hmm. And seeking after his kingdom. Listen, he's giving you power. When Jesus taught his disciples about the, about, uh, uh, or we, we, when he taught his disciples how to pray, the first thing he started out, he said, Our Father, who, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Right. So what he was doing, he was setting their focus. He was teaching them how to honor the father and seek after the father. Listen, we've got to get back to seeking after him. That's what this is about. Seeking after him. Chasing after him. If we be honest, we've gotten so busy with the affairs of this life that we stop seeking after him. We've got to get back. We've got to get back to seeking after him. God wants to sustain us. But he will sustain you when you seek after him and his kingdom and righteousness. Then everything that you need will be added. You don't have to stress. Hallelujah. Some of you, 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 you're stressing over what's going on and you're afraid. You're afraid. But my encouragement to you is to trust in the Lord with your whole heart. Lean not to your own understanding, but acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Trust in the Lord in this time and in, 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 in every crisis that you deal with in life. Trust in the Lord. Seek after him. Seek after his kingdom. Now, when you seek after, well, you, when you seek after him, when you seek his face, you're, you're seeking after his presence. That's the he that dwells in a secret place. When you seek after his kingdom, his way of doing things, while you taking care of his business, he's taking care of your business. He gives us an assurance of that in this, in this chapter in verse verse 28 so why do you worry about clothing consider the lilies of the field how they grow neither toil nor spin and yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these <laughs> now if God so clothed the grass of the field which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven. Will he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Mm. Therefore, do not worry. He's telling us this. Don't worry. Don't worry about how you're going to eat because I'm going to take care of you. Don't worry about what you're going to drink because I got that covered too. Don't, don't worry about how, how, uh, how you're going to be clothed. Don't worry about that because that's what the Gentiles seek. That's what people in fear is seeking. But trust in him. Trust in him. Listen, verse 33, but seek first. So he, and that's what he's saying, you know, 
Adjust your seeking. Change the way that you seek and seek after me. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Now, all these things will be added, uh, will be added to you. Don't worry about tomorrow because tomorrow will worry about itself. <laughs> Don't concern yourself about that stuff. Don't concern yourself about what's happening. But in the midst of chaos, if you learn how to seek him, and while you're taking care of his business, while you're lifting up his name and honoring him, he will in turn honor you. He will in turn take care of you and, and come on, supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. He'll make sure that everything that you need, you'll have them. Seek after. I just really feel impressed in my spirit that God is saying, seek me. Seek me. You know, one, one, one verse that, that has been also ringing in my spirit in this time is in the book of Chronicles. In the book of Chronicles. Second Chronicles. Go with me to Second Chronicles, chapter seven. You know, and then I, I, I want to read verse thirteen. It says, when I shut up heaven, now God is saying this. And, and see, this, this is why I'm saying that this is about what's happening in our nation, what's happening in the world. This is what I believe God is saying. This is why I'm telling you everything is revolving around seeking him again. He says this. In verse 13, it says, when I set up heaven and there is no rain or command the locusts to devour the land or send pestilence among my people. Verse 14, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, seek my face. There it is. Seek my face. And what turn from their wicked ways? Turn, he's talking about repent. Then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. And the verse 15 says, Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to prayer made in this place. Now, you notice in verse 14, he said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, pray and seek by face. Turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. Everything is revolving around seeking him. People of God, we got to get back to seeking him. Those of you that don't know God, it's time to repent and come back to him. He said in verse 13, he's, he, he said it clearly. He said in verse 13, when I shut up heaven and there is no rain or command the locusts to devour the land or send pestilence among my people, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sins and heal their land. Clearly says, you know, as he says, he said, or send pestilence. This virus that is going all over is pestilence. It's a sickness. 
that's going all over. This is why we've got to get back to seeking God again. So if you are a believer, seek God. If you are not a believer, repent. And if you're a believer that needs to repent, repent because he said, if my people. So all that, that, that does not, that does not separate, but that speaks of all of us. Whatever category you are in, he's saying, seek my face, and he's also saying, repent. Everything is revolving around that. So let's pray. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your people that, that are watching. In the midst of this crisis, we've, we've, we've been seeking you for answers. We've been stressing. We've been trying to figure out this, trying to figure out that, how we're going to eat, how we're going to sleep. But God, in, the, in this whole thing, you've been saying, repent. You've been saying, Seek my face. So God, right now, we take this time to repent to you. We humble ourselves before you. We get things right before you, Father God. Everything that we, that we, that we, that we did, that, that, we, that we knew that was wrong, and the things that we didn't know that was wrong, Lord, we repent of that. Lord, we want to cover all bases. We want to make things right with you, even now. Forgive us. We turn. Father God, we will be people that seek your face, oh God, and your kingdom. But Lord, when we begin to seek your face and your kingdom, not only will we be, not only will Psalms 91 be activated in our life with no sickness or pestilence will cross our dwelling or will affect us or our families. Father God, but I thank you that everything that we need to sustain us will be available unto us, Father God, according to Matthew 6 and 33, where it says, Seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto us. So, Father God, I thank you that we don't have to operate in stress or, or be anxiety or worry. We don't have to worry about nothing. For God, when we repent and we seek your face, we do those things that you are asking us to do. You will heal our land and supply all our needs. And we thank you for it now. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Listen, continue to seek after the Lord with your whole heart. Listen, he, he tells us in the book of Jeremiah, when you seek me with your whole heart, there will I be found. Amen? Now listen, we, we love you, and we are continuing to pray for you even in the midst of this. We will, we will continue to lift you up and those that may be battling with the sickness. We believe in God for their healing. Amen. Now listen, we will, I, I thank you for tuning in for Kingdom Empowerment. Um, we do have, we, we are still having service at the moment and we are also doing online services. You, you can, you can uh, watch our services also on Facebook. Um, you get our link on Facebook, our Facebook page is Kingdom Empower, Kingdom Empower, and our our ministry where me and my, my beautiful wife, Prophetess Tanya Thomas, and where we pastor here in Port here in Michigan, Kingdom Empowerment Ministries. Our street address is twenty seven hundred Pine Grove Avenue, and our Sunday services is at twelve noon. We would love for you to come and join us. Amen. We love you and continue to seek after the Lord with your whole heart. Amen. God bless you. And you see, we'll see you next time for your kingdom empowerment. Blessings. Amen.